Every day is no excuse day. You do not have an excuse. You gotta get back to the grind, you gotta get back to the work, and remain hardcore. We are hardcore, baby. Let's get to it. Salute family, Tank Commander Zulu back at you once again and that Real Man Movement. Today here at the Real Man Movement, we're going to be dealing with episode two of Black Flag, the African American veteran stories. Today, the topic is going to be dealing with the first real interactions with racism when it was an undeniable situation. Let's talk about it here today with Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement. Fire in the hole. We are tribal people. When I mean tribal, you know, the blacks go hang with mm -hmm. the blacks, the whites go hang with the whites, the Mexicans go hang with the Mexicans. That's mm -hmm. something instinctively inside of our DNA. We're tribal. Got to understand that. But mm -hmm. I believe that the the entire um, the the entire method of the military to to produce togetherness is to break that up, not really enforce it. And I'm I'm, I'm gonna get down into it because. There's a system that exists in the military that really enforces that particular tribalism with one tribe being considered more superior than the other tribes. Yes. So um, we're going to get into that, though. So, But that was my experience. And I want to go to the next thing I want um, to uh, talk about. And I know we kind of some of you guys kind of hit on some racist things we've seen and, and things like that. That would be my first experience with really seeing racism as well. Uh, from from up close and it happened to be a peer another private like me he came from a place where they that's what they call black people porch monkeys and that came out of him and mm. it, it, it got a response from me one that wasn't the world wouldn't call it civilized because all i understood that i had to put these hands on him you know mm -hmm. and that wasn't the right way but that's my pain made me turn to that because i had nothing else and so uh I wanted to ask about your, your experience with racism. You're kind of like your first real experience where you say, dang, this is actually racism. You know, your real first experience. I know we kind of touched on, well, these things are kind of racist, but what was the, 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 the big thing to say, man, and it kind of sucked the life out of you because some experiences in racism I had, it kind of sucked the life out of me. It kind of made, me, made my manhood shrink a little bit and I couldn't do nothing with it. And remember, just like uh, Drill Sergeant Good Game told me, I'll never forget it. You have to learn how to pick and choose your battles. And when you hear that, you know, and, and how does that make you feel? Keith, you got it. Oh, uh, that that's that that was that was that was a lot of wisdom he shared with you. And that was that was a lifetime lesson for me mm -hmm. from for over 20 years. That's that was a lifetime lesson because in every environment you have to learn how to pick and choose your battles because a battle is going to come and approach you. Mm -hmm. You just had to know, is this, is this, do I want to die on this hill or do I want to live for another day? And, and the first, the first time I encountered that is when I uh, finished um, MOS school and I was actually with my unit and my unit had maybe 2%, 2 percent black, I say throughout the, or five percent black throughout the entire battalion, and so what would happen is, similar to what you had experienced, they they will have these black jokes all day, mm -hmm. and so I would think, hey, wait a minute, is this is what they do all day? Congregate with each other and and, and learn black jokes, and so they would get offended when I don't laugh. Or I find the joke offensive, right? And so I, 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 so I realized that only way that I can go about my business 
and, and, and prove my worth is first not entertaining them. Mm. When they say a joke, is, is you respond like saying, okay, wow, that's another one. And then I move on, do my work so that I don't blow up and so that I can, uh, 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 so I'm not ostracized as a person that say, don't get along with their system mm. in order to be uh, considered for advancement meritoriously. So I had to, I had to bite my first unit, my first four years, just as uh, my uh, brother Thurston was saying earlier about uh, coming in as uh, a rank that he should have, the same thing as I. I was an Eagle Scout. I was supposed to come in as an E2, vice an E1. Mm -hmm. But they didn't even consider my Eagle Scout until later. Then I was like, oh, well, we saw you should have, you know, they missed that. You should have came as an E2. But it's too late now. <laughs> Right. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, so they, so they had to. They realized, okay, this guy got messed over. But since I didn't, I had to ignore some of their abuse that they were that they thought was not abuse. They thought it was like all fun and games. Let me be your friend by telling you a black joke, and you're supposed to laugh about it. That's crazy. So I was like, mm, okay, and I move on, <laughs> and I go do my work. And I'm bottling this thing up like, like a volcano. This reservoir inside of me is brewing every day. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I got my voice with God. And that voice say, take that energy, use it to a point where you become superior to them. And I did. I studied. I worked out. I was, I was a robot. Not for the simple fact that because I love the Marine Corps, I was a robot so I can advance to get above the scrutiny and the foolishness I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. So I got meritorious promoted. And as soon as I did, I became a non-commissioned officer. And of my whole entire squad and all the people that was below me, if, and I gave them a decree, if I hear you tell another racist joke, this is going to be your consequences. So I felt, so God enabled me to position myself to my level to kill it. But also at the same time, they went to go tell somebody that was above my rank. Mm -hmm. well, this, is how, this is how Corporal Cordier feels about that. And this is what he's threatening to do us. And so it got to a point whereas I was still able to assert my authority, but only at a certain level. Right. Because they still had some other people on top trying to press their thumb on me, not to hold them accountable for their egregious behavior. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I had to study. I had to work hard. Then I tried to get education while I was in there. Mm -hmm. And every time I tried to get to school, then it was like, well, you can't keep this full semester or you can't um, enroll in this class because we have a deployment. But then I can look at another unit in the same battalion I am, they're going to school. Right. They make the provisions for them. They made the provisions for them. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so that was my initial encounter with racism uh, in the Marine Corps and, and how I had to overcome that. And, and I had to turn, like you said, I had to turn that anger and I had to turn that inner rage I had in, into something productive to make me not only better than them, but superiorly better than them. And you had to play the game. And I had to play the game. That's another saying in the military when you've been play the game. And um, I can't tell you how many black soldiers who were uh, of higher rank than, my, and than myself at many times will come to me and say, well, Sergeant Williams, man, you got to play the game. It's not fair. It's telling you what you're, what you're experiencing is not fair, but in order for you to keep your rank, to be productive and continue to move up the, the chain, you have to play the game. And that's, see, these are sayings that, that are ingrained in my spirit, you know, and they are uh, devaluing to a black man, they were, uh, to my blackness as a man. They really turned out to be that. Uh, Thurston, you there, brother? You want to give me your account on that, please? Absolutely. Right. I, I guess, you know, the saying ignorance is bliss. And, and, and growing up in Mississippi, I 
probably did not experience my first interaction with a white person until I went to high school. I know that probably sounds foreign, but I grew up in Mississippi where all my friends were black, all my teachers were black, right. uh, all my church members were black. And so I, 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 was, I guess when I say I was ignorant of it, I, I, once again, it didn't dawn upon me until I went to high school. I met a guy named Kevin Adams. He was, he, uh, was a white guy, played uh, basketball because I, I was a good athlete. So I was a good, good, very good athlete with football and basketball. And so once again, this is how you know racism is learned because that even going into the ninth grade, I thought Kim, I thought Kim was was just like me. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, once again, I, I, my mom didn't teach me about racism or you know anything like that, or you know, may, you know, maybe, maybe, I should, but, but the, my true slap in the face is when Kim and I was getting ready to end practice and. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, I said, why don't you come to my house, you know, and just kind of hang out with me. He said, cool. He said, cool. And so he came to my house and, you know, my mom was, you know, my mom was like this, the neighborhood people, you know, she cooked and she was a teacher. And, you know, he was, he was just like, you know, like part of the game. But then I asked him, you know, one time I said, man, man, let's go to your house. <laughs> you know? So I rode my bike to his house and to his neighborhood and, I got all these kind of funny looks and I remember knocking on this door and he came to the door and he was just turning red. Like, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. I said, I says, I messed this man. It's just going to play a time. And I never forget. He said, you can't, you can't come to my house. It's just not, they don't, my parents don't allow, uh, they don't allow, what do you say? I, you know, they don't allow, uh, I, I don't remember what the right words was, you know, but once again, I'm like, well, what do you mean they don't allow, you know, my, my people? To, yeah, 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 yeah. They don't allow your people to come over to our house. I said, what do you mean my people? I mean, just totally ignorant, totally ignorant. Mm -hmm. And then it just did. It's like the light came on, like, right. like, 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 like Paul falling off, Saul falling off the road to Damascus, right? It's like, man, the light just came on, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is what you were talking about. And that was my first, first, first uh, experience with racism. I was ninth grade athlete. I can go everywhere with him. We can hang out everywhere on my side of town. And he was, you know, because I was the athlete, I was very popular. He hung around me, but I could not go to his house and on the side, uh, you know, on his side of town. And it, it, that, just, that, that done upon me. And that was my first experience. With, with racism, and of course, you know, I, I, I've had many stories since that time. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure, you know, these stories kind of stick with us forever, man. And um, mm -hmm. I want people to really understand how deep it cuts us as black veterans. Mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. I, once again, I entitled the name of this thing, Black Flag, the story of Afri African American veterans. See, these stories mm -hmm. need to be told. Um, mm -hmm. Now let me let me give you an experience I had when I when the light just I already kind of knew it, but when it really went on, you understand about um, wow, racism is really it's flagrant here in in the military where I am, right? Um, one of the issues I had when I was still in basic training, I think we were in AI, the AIT portion of it. We did it all together as tankers in Fort Knox, but uh, there was. The, the drill sergeants would give, they, they would check out who's being a good leader and they would give you a, a position, right? A position maybe as a, a little platoon leader or something, a squad leader or something like that. Just trying to teach, trying to show you how to, uh, how you ought to operate with authority when you're in authority. One of the problems I've always had is when a lot of white people tend to uh, usurp your authority, whatever yeah. authority you may have. They feel that they are greater authority in it, and they do it around or in front of people to where it's almost embarrassing you. Yeah, it's usurping your authority, whatever authority you may have. And I'm this is the beginning. This is when I really knew it was 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 uh was real when it hit me. Um, you know, I always was good physically. I always was good physically, and and that got attention of a lot of people. Um, I've always been kind of a stern person. Uh, that would that that has served me good and bad at times. But uh, in the military, uh, some of the black drill sergeants were paying more attention to me. And um, 
the one drill sergeant that put me in the position as a squad leader at that time. Uh, you know, they take your ear, your uh, your, your earplugs you have on your on your um, your, on your chest there, uh, and you put a, a different kind of color band around it. That shit says you're a platoon. You are a leader of a squad. Right. So you have it. You you have it on, and we have just like leaders do to teach you. All the leaders from other different squads in the platoon, in the company, would meet together, just like you're supposed to, and, and you know, address whatever, whatever's put before us to take care of, whatever it may be. It could be a detail or anything. Now, I, at this time, I'm the only black squad leader. Now, the we're all of the same position, right? The white guy that uh, his name was Corporal, not Corporal, but his name was a uh, Private Storm. I'll never forget. <laughs> Private Storm, right? He takes the people that I've already told, you know, okay, this is what we're doing. I need you guys to stand here. We're going to have the next formation at whatever time frame it was. He goes and usurps my authority and goes and tells my squad that don't worry about what Private Raymond said or, or Private Williams said. I'm telling y'all to do this and do that. Okay, now... The authority that that was given to me for me to exercise, I'm upset about it. So I feel I have a right to confront him about usurping my authority over my squad. You know what he told me? He said, drill sergeant told me to take charge of that situation. I said, well, if the drill sergeant told you that, then what, good, what am I doing here? Right. So, I mean, that's what I really felt it. But when I went to the drills, this guy was a white drill sergeant and tried to tell him what was going on. You know, he, he put me at parade rest and let me just stand there and left. Walk right by me, man. And I was just standing at parade rest. So, you know, they were teaching you about discipline. Once you put in that position, parade rest, you can't you can't leave it until you're told to be at ease. Right. But he was this was him disrespecting what I was trying to come to him about. He said, he said, Prophet, get that parade rest. And walked out, walked right around me and walked out and left me there. And so, you know, he was making his point about me not questioning anything that he does. So the beginning of the feeling of someone usurping your authority. Mm -hmm. he, as black men, I mean, all throughout my life, I've seen it one way or another. All, I'm pretty sure all of us can contest to it one way or another. Yeah. Even in the middle, as I moved up in rank, you know, I, you would get people who would try to usurp your authority. And it's embarrassing. What it does, it makes you is, as much of a leader you, you try to be, no matter how, you know, how, how, how uh, valiant you are, how good at every task you are, that thing continues to raise its ugly head. And it just devalues you so much That's right. as, a, as a man. And, and once again, it always goes back. I can never forget what that drill sergeant told me. You got to learn how to pick and choose your battles. And what that made me do, a lot of times it made me recede instead of stand. 